Would you be interested in returning to Qui-Gon if given the opportunity? Let's see him oh, dance. I think so. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Liar. so. Um, <laughs> if it was a film. Oh, nice uh, try. Yeah, <laughs> nice try, Liam. Snob when it comes to TV. I must uh, you're no I snob. Like we know you're not a snob. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. No, no you're no, a man of the earth. Qui-Gon, I, I, you're no, a simple I snow plow driver. Or security <laughs> guard for the rich and famous. We made uh, the foundation. <laughs> I just could not believe where the time has gone. I know. But it was a, it was a terrific All experience. All right. Well, Liam Neeson, we've never been more thrilled to be lied to. Yes. Uh, because we love seeing you back in this. And of course, again, we, we thank uh, Chris Killian and the wonderful folks at comicbook.com for getting that scoop and because it gave us this wonderful opportunity to test an actor's ability to act. Mm -hmm. And he did a pretty good job, I think. He had a pretty good answer. It's just, you know, we know if you're going to do voices in Clone Wars, you're going to be able to suit up as Qui-Gon. That's right. Back on the volume green screen set, wherever you did that. And uh, hey, we're going to actually revisit that episode of Clone Wars uh, right here in this episode because we're gonna talk Force Ghost today, folks. Welcome back to New Rock Stars. Obi-Wan Kenobi ended by debunking Liam Neeson's claims that he would only do a Star Wars film by bringing back the Force Ghost of Qui-Gon Jinn who saw every disgusting thing Obi-Wan did alone in that cave. <laughs> but how does Force Ghost and work exactly? And since Kenobi will learn this skill at some point in the future, what kind of training will these two jokers go through over the next nine years? Will it take them off world once again? Tell us the truth. Obi-Wan! 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 <laughs> this is Wookie Leaks. It's New Rockstar's weekly discussion of the biggest news in Star Wars. I'm Eric Voss. I'm here with my good friend, Tommy Bechtold. Eric. Tommy. Tommy. I'm on vacation, baby. I'm wearing my fun kind of Grogu hat that I'm not 100% sure. Disney did sell this in their store, so they did sign off on this, but I don't uh -huh. really, it kind of looks like Max Rebo and Yoda had like an illicit <laughs> love affair. So I've got, this, got some puppy dog ears. But it's not just that. I'm also joined by a ridiculously expensive BB-8 balloon I bought for my girlfriend's son. And if you thought that wow. was all you're wrong because she also demanded a Chewbacca doll. <laughs> <laughs> $45! <laughs> well, our, our Disney overlords very much appreciate your um, due pain. That's we have right. to spend at least like uh, $4,000 at the Disney parks yes. and resorts. Uh, we're required yes. by law. Or they electrocute us. Or they shock us, yeah. yeah. We, we, we've talked about the Chapik Kiss, you know, the That's little right. Chapik drone, <laughs> the Lolo drones that float around. Yes. They are invisible, and they are swarming around us I, at all times. I was in Magic Kingdom yesterday, and I got a touch of the Chapik Kiss, and I'll be honest, not enough baby powder in the world to get that off. <laughs> well, I have to show off some merch I got, yes. um, because I did an improv show last week yes. here in uh, San Francisco, and I was visited by a wonderful friend of the channel, our friend Mezzo, who uh, gifted me with my favorite gift I think I've ever received oh in terms God. of a Star Wars merch. I've never actually owned uh, like a light up one of these. The last one that I owned was uh, was like from the prequel era where it fanned out. Yes. You know? uh, I was obsessed with those, yes. but this one's a legit one. It lights up. Oh my God. Uh, oh. oh, it makes sounds. Oh, oh my. my God. And right now it's on rotating color setting, I think. Oh. Or no, no, I picked green. green Mezzo, you are incredible. What a gift. Mm, I love it. And, uh, <laughs> that is so cool. Ouch. It's like, I love this gift. Thank you so much for this. And perhaps the Delicious. greatest gift, attending a live comedy show. Oh, well, lucky. Here, I'll respond in a second. All right. Sorry, just let me get this one. I don't know what's going on. Oh, you're Sam Jackson now. <laughs> I wish I was. Here, I'm just going <laughs> to... You just smash, smash it in half. <laughs> That's weird. Oh, that wow. That, uh, I mean, come on. That is I mean, freaking sweet. Yeah, you know, normally I would I would laugh at the idea of a comedy show being a gift, but Mezzo was lucky to catch us at probably the best show we've done so far. That was a really fun night. Eric, I'm so sorry. We've been conditioned. I meant the gift was their attendance at your comedy show. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> the gift of, a, of a friend or supporter coming and that watching our, our improv shows. Yes. But, but yes, Eric, I have no doubt I've seen you improvise probably a thousand times, and each time is a gift for me to see my man Pretty Ricky up there doing what he does best. 
<laughs> well, that's kind of you to say. I, yes, but you are right. Uh, someone attending an improv show of someone else, that is worth its weight in gold. Mm -hmm. uh, it cannot be understated or overstated. As we continue to process the ride we just went on in Obi-Wan Kenobi's six episodes, we are left with the mystery of the Force Ghost. Mm. And we thought we would spend this episode explaining the spiritual history of this process, what it tells us about Obi-Wan and Qui-Gon's future over the next several years, until we chronologically next see Obi-Wan technically when Maul catches up with him in Star Wars Rebels, a Twin Suns episode, an amazing episode. Um, so, but there's like a long history. We gotta see what turns his hair white, mm. other than, you know, just, just old age. But, you know, <laughs> there's still a story to be told there. Uh, before we jump into our discussion today, another reminder, and new rock stars will be live in Austin on July 1st through July 3rd for RTX. That's Rooster Teeth's podcast festival. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be Tommy and me, plus Jessica Clements and Philip Molina doing a live show Saturday, July 2nd as part of the festival. It's just gonna be so much fun. I have a, I, I'm working on a really fun show. I'm not telling Tommy or the others about it. Ooh, but, I love uh, it. It's gonna be a, a saucy, saucy show. Speaking of saucy, Eric, I'm gonna fill you with ribs. I'm fill gonna, me to the brim, I'm gonna, pack my gut I'm gonna, with I'm ribs. I'm gonna double the ribs you have in your body. <laughs> I, yes, I need some barbecue. Yes. I need at least uh, I, at least one at least one meal to be some Torchy's tacos. Yes, oh I'd love yes. Me some, or some or some street tacos. Yes. I mean, street tacos are the best in Austin. But I just I have fond memories of Torchy's. I got, at least got to stop by. Torchy's, Absolutely. You know? Anyway, uh, so join us in Austin if you live in that area of Texas. You know. We're going to have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a fun weekend. So click the link in the description. Use the promo code NEWROCKSTARS. It's all one word for a discounted ticket price. We hope to see you there. But, you know, if you don't live in Texas or in the Austin area, don't worry. Uh, we're going to be hopefully getting on the road a lot more here at New Rock Stars. Mm -hmm. uh, so this won't be the last time we do a live show. Poughkeepsie, so, keep your ears open. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will go. I want to check it out. I've never been there. Um, Charlottesville, keep your ears open. <laughs> Dur Raleigh, Durham, keep them shut. We're never coming. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're never going to Durham. I just finished the staircase. I know what happens. That's there. right. Michael Peterson's coming for us. <laughs> Uh, also, this is your last chance to get our limited edition, latest obsession, Kenobi-inspired, Empire's Most Wanted shirt, available at NewRockStarsMerch.com. It's the best way to support us here at New Rock Stars. When you get one of these, you will unlock the added option to write in a custom shout-out that will appear at the bottom of these after shows. For example, uh, Matthew says, Eric and Tommy, you guys rock. Who wouldn't want to land on Bechtold 4? That's right. I mean... People are beginning I, to... Wanna... Uh, that's really catching on as canon, that the, the moon that... Uh, Vader and, and Obi-Wan fought on in the finale of Kenobi was in fact called Bechtold 4. Uh, yeah. Where are Bechtold 1 through 3? I'll never tell. Although we're going to try to subpoena you for that information because <laughs> the families want answers. <laughs> um, Qu <laughs> Quentin says Hayden's smile is as digital as a scorpion from the mummy. Hey, I don't think that's fair to no. say, Quentin. I think the I think the CGI was actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm, I assume you're referring to Hayden's smile from episode five. Mm -hmm. And yeah, smiles are very hard to animate. Uh, very hard to animate. It's not. I think he still smiled. It wasn't Hayden's smile. This was the VFX version of his face mapped on. It was really the animator's smile. And yeah, that that is kind of where you start to see some flaws. But... <laughs> To compare it to Dwayne the Rock Johnson yeah. in the Mummy, Come my on. friend, no way. Come on, Come that's not a fair comparison at all. But we do thank and you then, for your support and for purchasing the show. We do, we do. We we love to talk. Uh, we love to talk with anybody. Mm -hmm. You know, you, mm -hmm. you don't always have to agree with us. That's okay. That's right. Uh, and then Daniel says this lit and whatever this is, Daniel. I refer to you. Yeah. Everything is lit. This is lit. This is lit. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah. And thank you, Matthew. Thank you, Quinta. Thank you, everybody who has supported us with uh, with uh, uh, checking out our merch and supporting the channel. Again, that is the best way to support what we do here at mm -hmm. Rockstars. Um, all right. Let's dive into our discussion today. Tommy, what are we talking about? Eric, I'm not on the break room this week because, as I've said, I'm on vacation. So I'm going to have to get all my swears out here. So please forgive me when I say, Dank Ferret, how the fuck do Force Ghosts work? Mm, good question, Tommy. So the concept of the Force Ghost goes back to the original trilogy, of course. Obi-Wan Kenobi's disembodied voice in A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back, and then his ghostly form in Return of the Jedi. And an early script draft of Return of the Jedi established that returning as a Force spirit like this could only be attained by users of the light mm. side of the Force, not by Sith. And that's why it's so meaningful to see Anakin's ghost return alongside Obi-Wan and Yoda, even though it's still currently a bit confusing 
For anyone who watched the prequel trilogy first, that Hayden's Force Ghost appears there, despite Sebastian Shaw being the one under the mask mm. when Luke unmasks him. But I just say, give those Lucasfilm madmen some time. I guarantee you they will replace Shaw's face with Hayden's scarred face eventually using VFX technology. And then billions of voices will scream out in terror, <laughs> while another billion of voices who grew up with the prequels will scream even louder that the prequel trilogy is the most important of the three trilogies mm. and that everything Dave Filoni does is okay. That's right. Uh, I think... <laughs> I can't wait for that debate because you know it's inevitable. Yes. You know they're going to oh, play yeah, Hayden's absolutely. face over Sebastian Shaw's face. It's, it's going to be pretty bad. On now, it's it's very close on the Christmas list. Yeah, it's gonna. It's just inevitable. I think. Life, I, I'm sorry, I'm the not life crazy. I don't want that to happen. No. I'm not as much as I like Hayden. I like the redemption that he's getting through the Obi Wan Kenobi series. Mm -hmm. I think it was a travesty that his Force Ghost was put there at the end of Return mm -hmm. of the Jedi. It it the the moment that Mark Hamill and Sebastian Shaw connect with each other is sacred to me. Yeah. And I hate I hate that they just put uh, a different face. I think they should just Sebastian really Shaw's screw face. with people and put James Earl Jones's face in there. I mean, I'd be okay with be that. Like, how did, that is a compromise. What happened there? I, okay, I, I could get on board. I can get on board with James Earl Jones. Yeah. I don't, yeah, that would be okay by me. Um, so a Jedi becoming a Force Ghost was a skill previously known to the Jedi Order, but it was lost to time. It was rediscovered by Qui Gon Jinn from the Shaman of the Wills. This was explored in a season six arc of Clone Wars, the episodes titled Voices, mm. Destiny, and Sacrifice. For many years, we thought these were the final released episodes of Clone Wars before it was canceled, uh, but it was, of course, brought back for a season seven. But th this remains a very interesting arc that I highly recommend everyone goes back to watch because we learn a lot about the mysticism of the Force from mm. these episodes. Yoda learns through these forced priestesses about a more spiritual side of the Force. Uh, these Force priestesses uh, dwell in the wellspring of life. That's that's the Force planet mm. that is considered to be the origin of the midichlorians. Um, we don't know a lot about this planet, and I love that it's such a mystery. So um, Qui-Gon Jinn learned from the Shaman of the Wills. Uh, Qui-Gon Jinn's Force ghost appears in these episodes, and that, that's something they start to go into. Uh, now, you know the wills. The wills come from George Lucas's original draft of A New Hope when it was originally titled The Adventures of Luke Starkiller as taken from the Journal of the Wills. The idea was that the wills were these advanced alien beings from another era who kept all of these legends of Star Wars stories in their journals and then passed down these myths as mm -hmm. their like biblical myths and their parables that they learned from. Mm -hmm. Thus, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far mm -hmm. away, it was meant to be like this, like a bedtime story or a Bible story that they were telling their kids. Um, the Wills came back in Rogue One. Jared Imwe was not a Jedi, remember? He was a guardian of the Wills. Mm. He comes from that same devout religious tradition as the Shaman of the Wills. So Qui-Gon was working with the Shaman of the Wills, was unable to complete his training, of course, because Maul killed him in Phantom Menace. Mm. Uh, but Qui-Gon continued to speak through various disembodied voices. His voice called out to Anakin during Attack of the Clones when Anakin was slaughtering the Tuscans. He spoke to Yoda after Order 66 in Revenge of the Sith. But yes, somewhere in this time, Qui-Gon was able to uh, create a, a bodied ghost spirit of himself mm. to talk to people. Now, the sequel films further expanded the actual abilities of Force Ghost films. In The Last Jedi, Yoda's Force Ghost could manipulate the weather to cause lightning to strike a tree, and then he knocks Luke in the face with a stick. And then in Rise of Skywalker, Luke's Force Ghost picked up a lightsaber and then raised the X-Wing from the water. Mm. Uh, and again, dark side users are not able to return as Force Ghosts, but there's spiritual essence can inhabit objects the famous example being Darth Momin possessing a mask this was seen in the 2017 Darth Vader Lord of the Sith comics by Charles Soule mm. again I highly recommend you read those yes like whether you loved Obi-Wan Kenobi as a series or if you didn't love it if just read those comics mm. if you were interested enough in this uh, in these characters to watch that series you will not be disappointed in these comics I think these comics my opinion far better than the six episodes of Obi-Wan Kenobi I mm. just love those comics so much um, now, the question now is, can Qui-Gon give Obi-Wan this training on Tatooine, like in a remote learning session? Or would it be better for Obi-Wan to retrace Yoda's steps and the steps Qui-Gon went on, uh, or at least the steps that we saw Yoda go on in those uh, Clone Wars episodes, and uh, Obi-Wan would have to leave Tatooine for that? Uh, the implication for the final episode was that Kenobi was packing up his cave and moving further away from the Lars homestead because he did not need to keep as constant of an eye on Luke and then could pur pursue some other hobbies in his downtime. Yes. So what will Kenobi's uh, Force Ghost training look like? 
Could he go to Moraband, as we saw Yoda do? Could he visit the Wellspring of Life, hook up with some of those Force Priestesses, mm-hmm. sign up for some seminars, score some colored sashes, get <laughs> QGJ branded on oh his head? Oh my god. Aunt Peru, Bonnie oh, Piesi, grabs second. him by the shoulders and Arr. says, Honey, 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 no, 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 I had been through this myself. The volleyball is not worth it. Here, 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 come just help me hide some guns beneath Luke's pillow. 4 a.m. volleyball, do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I just want to discuss do you think? Qui-Gon Jinn uh, and his Force Ghosts are going to lead Obi-Wan off-planet again in order to get this training. I mean, I don't know how we're going to see it. I actually wouldn't mind if they just went back to do it as a comic book, you know? Like, I, I, I don't mm. know, rather than doing it as a uh, Kenobi uh, season two, I know I know, we all want to see Ewan McGregor play Kenobi as much as possible. And if there's any other way for it to happen, we're going to want to see it. But... I think the adventures of Qui-Gon and, and Obi-Wan are, are much more fun possibly seen through a graphic novel or, or a comic book series. Uh, I just, uh, I do think that, that he is going to stay with him now. I think eventually the nature of a Force Ghost is not that it's like a, it's not like a Drop Dead Fred or, or Beetlejuice where it's just attached at your hip. <laughs> the nature is it appears when you need it, when you call out to it in times of, of uh, a need for wisdom or for help. So I don't think he's necessarily going to be like, you know, they're not going to be playing uh, 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 You're My Best Friend by Queen, you know, as, as they skip through the, 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 the sands of Tatooine. Why not? Why can't they? No, you know, they can in our fanfic, Eric, but, you know, you won't let me publish it. <laughs> well, there's too that's much nudity. There's, just, there's way too much nudity. <laughs> and, like, it's not, it's not sexual. It's just, like, cruel. Well, sometimes like, it's when just I write mean. Obi-Wan pulled out his saber, I'm not always talking about his <laughs> genitalia. I am talking about his lightsaber. But most of the time, you are correct. I'm talking about his dick. <laughs> um, I, you're on to something, Tommy. I think uh, doing another uh, live-action series isn't the only way that we can explore this. So if they do do a season two of, of Obi-Wan Kenobi, this is what I'd want. Uh, I want Obi-Wan to go on his own spiritual journey, hang out with Qui-Gon a little bit, uh, even if Qui-Gon like disappears a little bit, now it's just Liam Neeson doing voiceover. I don't need uh, I don't need the Skywalker kids to show back up. But I think there's another alternative here. We could see like an animated season of this. Yeah. We don't have to do it in live action. Yeah. You know, like I'd be okay with just like a a, a prequel series to uh, or like a spinoff from Bad Batch or something like that. Absolutely. You know? Like there's there's other ways to do this that aren't necessarily the actors in live action. You yes. can save a bit of budget on it yes. and. Uh, and, and make it more spiritual, mystical, and really just go crazy with the animation the way that those Clone Wars episodes did. In fact, that's kind of what I want. Like, yes. we're seeing, we're getting like a Tales from the Jedi series. Yeah. We're, we're exploring more in animation. I think this would be a great era just to explore animation. I the completely agree because I think it, it also makes it so we don't have to have so much obsession over how these characters look live. You know what I mean? Right. We can animate them and it can people can just kind of let go of that because I feel like it's a default criticism that I've been guilty of as well, where it's like, oh, it doesn't look like the way I want it to look. Whereas in animation, you can set something. The characters obviously don't age unless they, the yeah. artists want them to. It just makes it easier to focus on the story and the voice performance. So I'm all in on that, Eric. Agreed. Uh, all right. So we're going to ask a few more questions that we had coming out of the Obi-Wan mm-hmm. uh, Kenobi finale. But first, we want to thank Mint Mobile for sponsoring this episode. If you are tired of fine print contracts and getting ripped off by big wireless providers for your cell phone service, then maybe it is time for a switch. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless starting at just 15 bucks a month. They are the first company to sell wireless service online only. They cut out the cost of retail stores and pass those sweet savings directly to you. And the best part is, there's no catch. Unlike when you make a deal with the Empire, there's always catches, right? Mint Mobile gives you the best rate whether you're buying for one or for a family. And at Mint, families start at two lines. All plans come with unlimited talk and text, plus high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. We have several members of the new Rockstar staff that use Mint Mobile. Editor Riley got to use his own phone and keep the same phone number along with all of his existing contacts. And Philip loves the premium service that he gets from his Mint Mobile account. So switch to Mint Mobile and get premium wireless service starting at just 15 bucks a month. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, get the new plan and get the plan shipped to your door for free. Go to mintmobile.com slash Wookiee. That's mintmobile.com slash W O O. K-I-E-E. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash Wookiee. All right, Tommy, back to this Obi-Wan finale. Uh, I want to ask you, why do you think Obi-Wan spared Vader? What, he had an opportunity to kill him off. Why didn't he do you it? You know, we, we talked about it in the office, and I talked about it on the break room a little bit. And I think that as crazy as it sounds, Obi-Wan felt an obligation to kill Anakin Skywalker. 
And once Anakin Skywalker told him that he, that Vader, him as the, as as obtuse as it sounds, that he as Darth Vader had killed the last of Anakin Skywalker, Obi Wan kind of like it kind of defeated his will. You know what I mean? Like it was kind of like, okay. I don't need to kill you then. It all is uh-huh. lost. You know what I mean? I think he wasn't thinking straight because if he thought straight, then it would have been like, uh, well, we could prevent this guy from killing a ton of more people. But I think he was so devastated by that line that it obscured him. Whereas Anakin, when he's upset, his his instinct is to kill. I feel like Obi-Wan's is like a feeling of helplessness. That's when he's least focused when he's thrown off like that. Whereas Anakin is blinded by rage. He's blinded by despair. If that makes yeah, sense. Yeah. I agree. I think that's a great read of it, Tommy. I think there might also be something with uh fear. I think he was worried if he got that close to him, yeah. like that Vader could like force choke him. He could strike at him. Yes. Like in order to actually finish him off, yeah. that that might uh, damage him in either a physical way or like in a spiritual way yes. that it might break his soul even more. Like he might be mm-hmm. haunted with, <laughs> with the, he was at a, a place of closure in that moment, just sure. knowing that Vader killed, killed him. And at that point he's like, He's like, all right, I can walk. Yes. Now, I still cannot. <laughs> I, I still have a problem with Obi Wan walking, yeah. knowing how much of a war criminal that's, Vader was. I think, at so, this point. I think that's the hardest thing to logically separate. I think they yeah. need to. They need to cover that and like either you know whether they, they they you know clean it up in post interviews or they clean it up in in a in a, uh, a uh, whatever comes next. That does need yeah. to be addressed. Yeah, I think sure. it is a. Be I, I'm, okay. to address, rather. I'm comfortable calling it a failure of this show yeah. because to me, that's like the simplest question coming into the series: yes. How can we make these two characters fight, yes. but still able to walk away from this yes. fight so that they have a rematch on the Death Star? Yes. Like to me, that's at the top of the list. And to me, like that conversation did not properly address why he just didn't kill him off yeah. in that scene. Like I understand if there's like a physical barrier mm-hmm. or if like. The nature around them forces them apart. If it's just like the chaos of it, they are not able to finish each other off. Makes perfect sense to me. But this, he like chose to walk away, and they did not properly explain mm-hmm. why he made that choice. Yeah. Knowing what he knows, Obi Wan witnessed him murdering civilians, yes. innocent people everywhere. Yeah, he knows how evil this guy is. This is a huge win, and it and it like he at least has to be worried about Leia and Luke's future. Uh, that Vader is still out there. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't this be an opportunity just to like protect those kids right. from this monster? Like, right. Just to put them down? Right. I yeah. Absolutely. I have an issue with that. I mean, he should have um, killed him. He should have killed him. Absolutely should have killed him. As Vader even said, you should have killed me when you had the chance. And I understand for Star Wars continuity, we have a whole sequel, we have a whole original trilogy where right. that can't be the case, but it's just like, yeah, you could come up with it, any reason why. They needed to do it better. They needed to like make, make it, it so like better. Obi-Wan was so, they needed to injure him. You know, or something right. like, or make him think he killed him again. Yeah. I mean, episode three did a better job, at least with just like a burning pile of minerals. Right. That I'd be willing to accept. Absolutely. I mean, I was at the end of episode three. I'm like, okay, well, that, those flames are pretty high, mm-hmm. you know? Um, but anyway, uh, all right. Last question. Yes. Do you think Obi-Wan will see Leia again before the Death Star? Is there going to be some <sighs> other storyline that uh, where those two cross paths? I really hope so. <laughs> I just want to yeah. see. I mean, I, I guess... I love what we got from this season. I don't know if we need them to, though. You know, I think what they had was so meaningful that that would compel her to to plead for his help in A New Hope. You know what I mean? Like, she obviously now has this great reverence and love for this person as a, you know, a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a person who saved her, you know? So I, I, I think that we, that we don't necessarily need it, but yeah. I, I hope they do just because I, I like happy endings, you know? I hope so too, just because, or at least I hope we get something that kind of um, revisits that look that Leia gives Obi-Wan on the Death Star mm-hmm. and just gives it some context, yes. you know? This can be something visited in any series, just like a moment yeah. between the two of them. Now, obviously, Carrie Fisher, Alec Guinness would not be able to act in that right. moment. You have to bring other actors to do it. Right. Ewan McGregor and Familiar Blair. But uh, I think there's like ways you can do it either through animation, you know, through a comic. I just want a bit more yeah. now that we have this great context between the two of them where they, where they share this together. Well, we will leave it there for this episode of Wookiee Leaks. Don't forget to check out our merch options at NewRockStarsMerch.com. Follow me at EA Boss. Follow Tommy at Tommy Bechtel. Follow New Rockstars. Subscribe to Wookiee Leaks wherever you get your podcast. We will see you next week. We're going to do this every week until we get to Andor. Uh, but again, we thank you for joining us this week. We have, have spoken. spoken.